वेलकम बैक एवरी वन नाउ वील बी बिगनिंग विद द सेशन फाइव आई होप एज फार एज द लास्ट सेशन वॉज कंसर्न यू रियली इंजॉयड लर्निंग अबाउट द रीडिफाइंड ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ सेल्स मैनेजमेंट बट नाउ एज वी मूव फॉरवर्ड वील बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग और मे बी एज फार एज दिस सेशन इज कंसर्न यू विल बी एबल टू एप्रिशिएट द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ द प्रीफिक्स स्ट्रैटेजिक बिफोर सेल्स मैनेजमेंट रिकॉगनाइज जो गिर द वर्ल्ड्स ग्रेटेस्ट सेल्समैन एंड अंडरस्टैंड सेलिंग इन अ वूका वर्ल्ड now the whole idea is see if you want to understand why we need the prefix strategic before sales management i think you already got a lot of reasons right with respect to what we have been discussing till date but another thing which again i want you to understand is how marketing is different from selling because many times you know you will see a lot of people using these terms interchangeably so even with respect to this i thought let's try something in so we we'll learn this in a different way so i picked up three you know marketing or maybe you can say management stalwarts and we'll be looking at their quotes which actually pinpoint how selling is different from marketing or how marketing is different from selling so this is kind of something different but as we move forward i'm very sure you'll appreciate this approach now let's look at the quote by t levitt theodore levitt who is very very popular for proposing a concept like marketing myopia now let's look at what this scholar says selling focuses on the needs of the seller right because see if if you simply go with the traditional approach it is all about what the seller wants just how sell these products because what he wants is their conversion into the cash right but if you talk about marketing it is all about the needs of the buyer that's why in the further line you see selling is preoccupied with the seller's need to convert his product into cash marketing with the idea of satisfying the needs of the customer by means of the product and the whole cluster of things associated with creating delivering and finally consuming it see when you look at marketing you will many times find they'll write it is all about creating communicating and delivering value right now when you talk about creating maybe we can say the marketing research will have a lot of role right you get into the market you try to understand the gaps what competitors are doing what is it you know that the customer wants where actually the gap lies but you can't even ignore the role of sales people or sales organization in this even with respect to creating you might be able to get a very fantastic feedback from the sales team because again i think we have discussed it a lot of times that when they are out in the field in the market or they are take, talking to prospects so even the customers of competitors they might have something you know information or a piece of information which could be very very useful with respect to understanding what we need to create or even what we need to modify so this was about creating now even if you talk about communicating right what is it that you want to communicate with your prospects or existing customers or the customers of the competitor sales person can again provide a lot of feedback like like i just gave you the example of you might be wondering what is your usp right you might consider it as the price whereas the sales person who is on field might provide you a completely different perspective then you can use the same information for crafting your set of communications now when you talk about delivering again the people who work in retail stores who are in direct selling or the people who are taking orders inside the stores or the personal selling people who get into the field or get into face to face meetings with the customers with respect to selling products in every phase the sales person or i think to put it right not the sales person per se the sales organization will definitely have a role so i hope you got a perspective with respect to the stalwart t levitt now as we move further let's look at what professor cotler says authentic marketing is not the art of selling what you make but knowing what to make again he is trying to bring in the perspective of being a lot more customer centric you are trying to understand what is it that the customer wake and then you understand what is it that you need to make to keep it maybe to put it in other way what is something that will be what you should make so that you will be able to sell it like hot cakes so he goes further it is the art of identifying and understanding customer needs and creating solutions that deliver satisfaction to the customer 
profits to the producers and benefits to the stakeholders. Now again get to this facet of profits to the producers. It in a way indicates that you should not be selling at a loss, right? Because see, whenever a sales person gets into the field, if he is a new one or maybe he is facing the heat of achieving its target, he might undersell or he might give more of discounts to sell a product. But again, that is not going to work in long term. That's why profits to the producers is again going to make a lot of sense and the sales organization will have a lot of play in that and benefits to the stakeholders. He further goes, market innovation is gained by creating customer satisfaction through product innovation, product quality and customer service. If these are absent, no amount of advertising, sales promotion or even salesmanship can compensate. Now again he is trying to you know, endorse the idea that first understand what is it that the customer wants. If you really want to focus on creating customer satisfaction or you know create an element of delight with respect to the products that you are manufacturing through product innovation, product quality or offering best of customer service. It is very very important that you have the marketing principles set. Again, the whole idea is about being very very customer centric because see it can also be a route for innovation. Like again we can use the same example of Tata is once they realized the gap and they were customer centric they got into the field with respect to understanding or the needs of let's say the truck drivers or maybe you can say opinion makers or maybe mechanics or other people they understood what is it the people want definitely a truck which was very compact and will bring in a lot of prestige for them also and definitely efficiency with respect to operating so these are all the thoughts of one of the fantastic marketing professors, Professor Kotler. Now let's say what Joan Woodward had to say. See, those responsible for marketing had to sell not a product but the idea that their firm was able to produce what the customer required. Now what the customer requires or what is it that is required by the customers, the salesperson can definitely provide a very good insight. The product was developed after the order had been secured. The design being in many cases modified to suit the requirements of the customer. I think the scholar has put it very very beautifully that see the product was developed even after the order was taken and they went ahead and modified. Again it brings in a lot of perspective of you know that relationship orientation and even when you are doing these modifications where is that feedback coming from? Okay, it might come through marketing research, but when you talk about B2B selling or industrial selling, it is definitely going to come from the salespeople, right? See, if the product is very, very huge in terms of money, very expensive, that one-to-one -one dealings and the modifications which might be required to be made in, let's say, uh, an industrial product will definitely come from the people who are talking to the prospects, right? In mass production firms, the sequence is quite different. Product development came first, then production and finally marketing. I think rather than marketing, maybe we can say selling. This is what I think, but definitely what Professor Woodward has tried to put it like when you are talking about just an idea of marketing which is more dominated by a selling approach. Now, another thing which I really want you to understand with respect to this particular gamut is the mindset differences that salespeople might have as far as the marketing employees are concerned or maybe you can say sales versus marketing employees mindset differences. So the first one is customer versus product. If you look at salespeople, they are responsible for a set of customers and the organization wants them to, you know, promote the use of products and services which an organization manufactures to these customers. Whereas if you talk about marketing, it focuses more on products that fit the customer needs. But see, this customer versus product thing or sales versus marketing employees mindset with respect to customer versus product can be looked at even from a different perspective. You can even align the product orientation with respect to sales and customer orientation with respect to marketing. In the sense like we might also say with respect to the traditional orientation, sales people are responsible for selling the product which an organization manufactures. Whereas marketing is more customer centric. So with respect to explaining this mindset, it is all about the orientation or the thought process that you are having. But I have precisely derived it from one of the research papers which I will be telling you in the end as a part of references. Now another mindset difference is 
personal relationship versus analysis see we all know that one of the key facets of sales job is that you are out in the field you are meeting people on daily basis you are working towards those relationship with customers whereas if you look at marketing they basically deal in aggregation of customers or segments of customers and they basically utilize data to draw insights so this is again one of the differences right see even if you look at marketing anyway sales organization is definitely broadly going to be a part of marketing only but this is one thing which can be kind of very concretely associated right because you will not find marketing people getting into the field and you know meeting people daily but that's not the case with sales people so the another mindset difference that we need to understand with respect to marketing and sales employees is field versus office again you know that you know sales people a particular segment of sales people that will be definitely you know understanding what are the different kinds of salesmen work in the field and they you know face the pressure of customer demands coupled with rejections and all that stuff whereas marketing people usually operate from office right another thing which can be aligned with respect to marketing versus sales is sales is more of a continuous daily activity right they have this element of daily reaching out to customers visiting customers or maybe calling them or or doing a lot of cold calls whereas marketing is more about sporadic projects which means it is more project driven like it could be related to coming up with a new product or maybe taking care of a marketing research activity which could be related to identifying any of the problems like why are sales so low in the southern region or why are sales so low in the northern part or maybe related to how we can kind of modify our product to better suit the needs of the customers or it could be related to crafting sales different sales promotion programs for different segments of customers so this is another difference which you need to understand apart from that if you look at sales people it is more result oriented in the sense like they can get quick feedback on the results regarding let's say whether after a demo whether order was placed or not or with respect to how a customer behaves if we are more looking at their quantitative performance standards or maybe quantitative objectives let's say how many calls have been made how many visits have been made but that not the case with marketing it is more process driven and things may take time let's say if you are trying to create an awareness or trying to change the image of the brand or the product you will be able to only you know notice these differences in medium to long term but again the crux is with all these digital marketing tools you know coming in things have changed you can now measure let's say even if you put a post or an organization puts a post on facebook instagram or linkedin even with respect to let's say likes dislikes or on if if it is on twitter with respect to retweets you will be able to see you know the buzz that the product or maybe you know whatever you are offering creates so digital marketing has kind of made it very easy or readily for an organization to measure the results of marketing activities now the last thing which you need to understand with respect to this is see now we are talking about it from a traditional approach selling is usually short term you will focus on just closing that day still right in a way definitely if you get to the modern aspects of it you will be focusing on relationships whereas marketing definitely has a very long term orientation it really focuses on making customers their advocates advocates means who will be kind of recommending their products or even protecting the products if they you know if you are an advocate for a product or you feel very very emotionally attached with the product you might not like someone talking bad about it you might even go ahead and try to change their mindset or you will kind of spread a lot of positive word of mouth so marketing is more about creating that brand loyalty but again i would say if you talk about the modern selling or you know the contemporary selling approach it kind of you know uh, captures all of these in the strategy that they adopt with respect to when they reach out to customers so i hope with respect to what we discussed about you know this difference between marketing and selling and mindset differences i think now you will definitely be in a position to answer me better why we need the prefix strategic before sales management this is in line with everything that we have discussed sales person being a consultant working closely as a collaborator with the prospect or client 
with respect to understanding who is profitable who is not profitable with respect to having a very very high focus on a relationship orientation assisting in marketing activities assisting in innovation assisting in creating a very good and huge database of customers which can definitely be utilized for i would say drawing very very rich insights then again see even if you look at the traditional functions contributing to profitability because you can't deny the fact that sales is the only department which brings in profits see when you look at other departments they are precisely cost centers even if you look at finance hr even the other marketing functions whether it is advertising sales promotion it is only the sales organization that brings in revenue or brings in the required or maybe we can say converts products into cash so even with that respect that micro perspective we can't deny the fact that it is one of the most strategic roles right so when all these factors and how you know it is the high time when we need to understand that the marketing and sales should work in tandem with each other to bring in the best of benefits for an organization we can't deny that we definitely need the prefix strategic now even with respect to this topic what i want from you is just get to the forum and make it active buzz it with your thoughts and you tell us why do you think we need the prefix strategy because i think if we look at the session 1 to 4 i have given you a lot of reasons right to kind of think why it has to be strategic and there is no other way out so i'll wait for the time to read what you think why this is strategic and you know will be more than excited to head to forum to see what you post so now i think we get to the another i would say very intriguing part which is what are the trends in selling or maybe you can say sales management so first is demos need to sell the problem show them you truly care earlier the case was see whenever the product demonstrations were given to the prospects or customers it was all about this is what the product does or these are you know the key characteristics or features of the product that is not going to work now your focus has to be on solving their problems that's why i have been repeating it a couple of times it is very very important if you want to get hold of a key account understand their processes be their collaborator and try to work towards solving their problems it is not going to work if you just tell them oh these are the features of the product those days are now completely gone focus on telling how this is going to be beneficial for them with respect to solving their problems other thing is multi touch approach it's not like you call the customer or the prospect you gave them the presentation you sold and your job is done even if you look at let's say are providing very good after sale services your conversations or touch points could be related to that this is not going to work now you really need to have to focus on having meaningful interactions communication relationship building and problem solving which means that always reach out to your prospects even when they have not brought from you with respect to understanding so these are the new products or ma'am these are the new products that we have if you bought it from a competitor how do you think that was better once the relationship has been strike because the point is see if you come up with an improved version of the product you will be definitely able to pitch it to them or maybe i would say if your product can solve their problem better i think you will be able to do it other thing is the hierarchical nature of sales will flatten which means that now this is more in the orbit of a lot of people now working virtually from their homes which definitely indicates that you need to empower them to take the right decisions at right time you can't have those you know lengthy hierarchical structures in which everything will be approved definitely you can have a strategy and policy with respect to this but with respect to virtual teams you really need to empower them other thing is specialization in vertical markets now why i am telling you this is or why we are giving you the example of niche markets is see it's not like you only have to sell a product if you think you will have a large base of prospects you can even come up with the product for a niche market for with for a very specialized market who could be very small in number but if they are profitable why not right so the whole idea has to be focusing on those customers even if the count or quantity is small they can be profitable just imagine the idea of various vegan restaurants that are now being open in india right 
they are very niche but just because they are catering to a niche segment they are able to command those prices and they end up being to an extent being profitable another trend in selling which again is going to revolutionize the sales dynamics is freemium will kick start the sales conversation now this is all about looking at your customers from two tiers one is who look for a freemium or maybe the premium ones which means see now this is more working with respect to the services that are being sold you give them a free account or an access which is free for few days now once you make them realize how the product solves their or the service solves their problems or how it is beneficial for them there are very high chances that they might switch to a paid form of you know servicing or maybe you can say towards a better version which brings in a lot of revenues or profitability for you but in this case you have to be smart enough with respect to understanding that when when you give that freemium period offer them the best that you have so that they realize that this is the product that they definitely need and in a way see this can also be a conversation starters right especially if we look at the market in india this can work but again this might not work for every product now the other part or other trend is about leveraging executive sponsors to close the deals see this simply means we definitely talk about team selling right when you have a huge team huge team as in at least 5 6 people rather than one salesman who is dealing with the prospects in this case you might have some experts who might accompany you like you might have someone from your organization who is on a position that if required he can take the required decisions with respect to discounts or if anything extra that needs to be offered or with respect to pricing and from the other organization also from the prospect or customers organization also you have an executive sponsor sponsor as in a representative who will negotiate on their behalf at least when you have two parties or two key people who are kind of negotiating or striking a deal i think things can be done on the same day rather than you have someone who will say i'll get back to you another thing is again collaborative sales culture will be top priority which means that sales should not be looked at just and you know the last part of the tail who is selling the products they need to be aligned very much with production department definitely with various facets of marketing and also with other department i would even say hr department because when they are designing training programs for them they should know what is it that really need to be imparted emergence of social selling is again one of the trends that we have discussed team based selling i have already given you a perspective sales automation which again can be a two edged sword you really need to figure out you know what is it that we can automate so that we don't end up losing that physical touch but see one of the advantages when you talk about sales automation is let's say earlier if you are trying to identify prospects it can be a huge and daunting task you need to do a lot of homework do a research collect a lot of information about the prospect but now even linkedin offers you a very very specialized service in which you can have a checklist okay my prospect would be someone who will have this much of turnover or this much of income he has to be in this much age group he he might have this much habits or things like that and they will provide you a list of the prospects which could be very very convertible for you your focus has to be on value selling value selling here simply means you need to provide the products in which you are not compromising on quality and you are trying to bring down the prices these definitely can be star sellers for an organization another important trend don't just rely on customer support don't wait that if something goes wrong we have a team who will be taking care of you create an experience in such a way that everything looks very very delightful for the prospect or maybe existing customer and they are willing to you know walk that extra mile with you or have that long term association with you so the whole idea of this particular part is don't just have a customer support system create experiences that make a long lasting impact in which again you get that extra edge of cross selling and upselling video based selling again as emerged as one of the trends right definitely during covid times now we also need to train our sales people in ways that they can strike better conversations or they are able to present or pitch products well when it comes to video based selling you can see when you talk about video based selling you can definitely have different elements like you can create very multifaceted videos which are very high on maybe let's say emotions or you can use visual background sounds in a way that can kind of stimulate the emotions of the customers or the prospects towards the organization or the products and the last trend is figuring out what is it that will work online and what is it that will work offline 
I think I gave you this example earlier also. Why is it that OnePlus is only selling their products on Amazon? Why they are not selling through physical stores? Likewise, you can look at a lot of examples which might work in this way. You might also need a strategy which product, even if you are looking with respect to social selling, which product will work best when you talk about, let's say, Instagram or LinkedIn or Facebook or all these other social media platforms. So this is something which is definitely going to be very, very relevant. Now we get to the another exciting part about Joe Girard. This is one of you know the elements of extra fodder for thought. So here it is about the Joe Girard. Just look at this gentleman, born into poverty. Joe Girard sold around thirteen thousand one cars over the course of fifteen years. And trust me, these were not fleet sales. Fleet sales means these were not sold you know to a large group. Let's say if Tata Group buys you know let's say 200 cars or one organization buy which they need to use for their employees that was not the case these are all individual car buyers he holds the guinness world record for being the world's greatest salesman in 1973 he sold 14 125 cars and in one month 174 which is a record even today so this is one of the gentlemen that we really need to celebrate. So as a part of offering you something more, here are links for the videos that you can definitely hear. Two video links, one is about selling lessons by the world's greatest salesman, other one is about how to become a highly paid salesman. So now as we'll move further, we'll be talking about selling in a VUCA world, but this is going to be in the next session. So I hope this session was kind of very enriching for you with respect to learning new things about the sales world. Thanking you for now.